come on. I did, uh, when I was asked a few weeks ago to take part in this panel, compose a script which had learned quotations and footnotes in it. But I decided to throw it away and simply to converse with you, to share a few thoughts which come into my mind when I think about making tradition relevant. And actually I've got three questions to ask. I want to know what tradition is. I want to know what Jewish tradition is. And then I want to know how we deal with that enormous great mess which constitutes Jewish tradition. Well, in answer to the first question, I would say that tradition is the cultural counterpart of genetics. Just as genetics passes information from one generation to another through direct physical means, tradition is the biological means that we have of preserving our species by passing information on to the next generation. What does it consist of? It consists of language, of words, stories, music, food, clothes, customs, law, misvot, if we want to use a proper Jewish term for it, which are part of our language and which make us what we are, so that we are us and they are them. Oh dear, that is already a slightly dangerous concept. Tradition divides between us and them. Next thing is, what is Jewish tradition? Well, let me start with where I am, the community I belong to. A sort of normal Orthodox Jewish community, fully within the rabbinic tradition. And wherever that came from, which is an interesting historical question. It's also an Ashkenazi community. But I think if today I want to know, and I want to know from the standpoint of Israel, of a nation, what constitutes Judaism, this is far too narrow a definition. <coughs> Quite obviously, I'm not going to rule out the Sephardic tradition. But it goes much further than that. I'm not going to rule out the traditions of the end of Israel or of the Ethiopians, who have their own quite distinctive traditions, but they must be part of the Jewish fold as well. And if I go back uh, or look a little further around, then why should I rule out the now traditions of conservative, reform, and other Jewish sects, or for that matter, even of, of Karaites? Indeed, in a world in which there is more information available than ever, it would be absurd to confine myself to my little bit of tradition. So perhaps that's lesson number one. We have to look further afield and cast down it very widely if we want to take on board the whole of Jewish tradition. I hear people talking about the Bible, but the Bible itself contains all sorts of traditions very often conflicting with one another. You'll see that in a moment. If that's Jewish tradition, and there's a lot of material there, how do we handle it? How do we interpret it today? How do we select? We will have to select. I think that a very good example of how this process takes place is in connection with warfare and the conduct of war. The ethics, the morality of war, the reasons you go to war, or the way that you conduct war. After all, if we look at the Tanakh, it must be our starting point, we have within it a number of different points of view. We have the most familiar one, a pretty nasty one actually, uh, which starts with the war against the Canaanites and a war of extermination, a war of Canaan. Hardly a model for us today. And people have always felt a bit uncomfortable about this. It seems to have been opposed by King Saul, Shaul Amelech, and even Akkad, Melech Israel. Uh, they didn't get any thanks for it from the prophets. And as things have moved forward, this particular type of war has been excluded, has been defined out of existence 
as something only relevant in a very specific occasion, which no longer applies. I'm not very really happy with that, because after all, it's still part of, of, of the teaching of Torah, and can still today have some very uncomfortable repercussions, as we know from the assassination of Rabin, or from the massacre which took place at Hebron. Jumping forward, what has happened with that tradition about war? We have selected, rather, statements from Yeshayahu, from Micha. Lo Yisar Goyol Goy We set as an ideal, world peace. No nation battling against any other. We have two values which seem to have come forward in the 1930s and are very much part of the Israeli consciousness and of the training of Tzahal. Of uh, Laga, uh, of restraint, of Tohar Haneshek. Tell me where those words are in the traditional sources. I haven't yet found them. But we have picked up something out of our tradition, certain values, and use them as a hermeneutic, as a key to interpreting other statements which come within the tradition. And I think this is a model of how we must handle tradition. We have to pick up on positive values, those which in our society appear at least to be the positive values, and use those to interpret. I think we've succeeded in connection with the conduct of war. I think that so far we have failed with regard to discrimination, particularly discrimination against women. I think we've failed with regard to the question of exclusiveness. But these are the challenges that lie before us. What the answers are, I don't yet know. But selection and interpretation are needed. Thank you.